everyone this is Ujiu here and I'm having a I'm starting a little fun little series which I like to call tilting and I think tilting is something that every chess player has ever done whether it's casual world championship play big tournaments super GMs all those things there's been tilt that takes place there's that human condition that makes us human, but makes us not what make computers. And I think it's really important to know how to control our tilting to, I wouldn't say prevent us from playing worse than what we're capable of, but to mitigate that. I think that's an important issue. Uh, for example, in the last, I would say a day and a half, I dropped over 100 Let's see, 1932. I was 2170. So I dropped over 250 points. Yeah, that's about right. Crazy. And I owe it to me tilting and not controlling it, but also because um, I'm mentally really fatigued right now. I haven't had a lot of sleep in the last day and a half. Not complaining, just been working a lot of stuff, working on work, doing a lot of extracurricular self development. And I've been really focusing on YouTube and trying to figure out how to create content right now i'm i'm just kind of stretching i want to do more things and use graphics and stuff of that nature but i'm still learning and i know i'll just come within due time but i definitely think i want to try this series out and it's not going to be i would say i'm going to be very focused on it compared to the heart of chess which i think that i'm really going to be really involved with but this it's kind of me playing some bullet or blitz games and me talking about how to control tilt. Uh, right now, I shouldn't be playing because I should be getting sleep so I can mentally restore myself. Although I can definitely tell you from my last experiences in playing chess right now that I haven't been, I, can, I, I can't tell that I'm not playing that well, but I'm not playing that well, if that makes sense. So let's play some games while uh, I talk about tilting. Now, I find that the easiest way to control your tilt is you need to take a break. You need to get some fresh air. Uh, I think that's the most important thing when it comes to playing chess. You have to have that that time for yourself where you can sit back and and recharge. Yeah, so I'm not as I'm not as good as you think I am in terms of saying stories while I'm playing chess. It's only when I'm really focused that I can really start focusing on. On, on the story aspect of chess. And right now I'm just casually talking, just getting a feel for uh, this game right now. Uh, so my earlier games, the one thing I was really slacking on was time. I think my time control was not that particularly strong right now. So I'm just very well aware of keeping an eye on my time. So he's playing all these threats on the queen side, which yeah, like, that's not doing anything. Well, I'm already starting to build up on his king's side. So I don't... He's just playing all these unnecessary moves while I'm just slowly building up. Uh, do I care about that? I don't really. I'm just going to keep pushing. He can trade queens all he wants, but I'm already attacking his king, and I'm isolating his d6 pawn. But my time is slowing down, so I need to speed it up. Okay, so we want to do that. Actually, I don't even think I should have taken it, but I just did, so. Whoops. I really want to go after that g6. Is that a pawn he took? Shit, I didn't even realize that. Oops, I just swore. I didn't really want to swear on YouTube, so. My bad. Okay, so this spot is not that bad. Right now. No, I don't want to trade that. Yeah, this is not a good spot for me. I think I lost halfway into my plan. And look at the time. It's I'm just moving so much slower. And the weird thing is that I don't feel like I'm moving slow. I really don't. And that just goes to show like the fatigue of your mind when you don't even know that you're doing something that is not at your 100%.
Like, I already know the game is over. I'm just kind of going through the, the motions right now. Yeah, it's done. And I would never have lost that originally if I if I was playing at my, my normal top form in Blitz or in Bullet. Let's play another one. So one way to control tilt, apart from getting fresh air, is you want to play something that's comfortable. Because I find that when you start losing and you start going to a two, three, four game lose streak, you start trying to switch it up. And the thing is that if you switch it up to openings you don't know enough about, it's just going to make things worse. You're just going to be left in a, in a not so superior position and it's just going to make you get into tilt even more. So that's the way I look at it. See, I'm already moving slower and I shouldn't be going this slow. Oh, that's always fun to do. Okay. Really? What's the best way to deal with this? Okay, I'll do that. If I'm allowed to play Knight B4, I might start enjoying this spot. Oh yeah, I like this now. Oh yeah, gimme gimme. So now I gotta speed up, or I'm just gonna slow down. Uh, da, 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 we'll do that. Sure. Okay. I think I'm just gonna push pawns. Yeah, I'm going to keep pushing pawns. Okay. Mm. See, I'm already losing on time. It's just... That's a nice move. I really... Oh, I have a check here. I didn't even realize it. Sure. Okay, so I somehow survived that, even though I'm definitely playing a lot slower. Like my normal speed, I would be hitting 50 moves right now. And I feel like as though when I was younger, I would I was better at speed games. And now that I'm older, I'm not as good. But that's a lie. I think age brings like a certain set of wisdom. You just get better over time as long as you condition yourself correctly. Oh, I should never have done that. Well, but it still worked out. That's fine. We can trade the knights. Uh, okay. We'll trade bishops too. Okay. Uh, this is a good time to stack my rooks. He might play f6 or she might play f6. It's a debate. Do I like that knight move? I could push the pawn. Nah, it's better to stack first. And I could push the pawn after, assuming the rook goes to. Ooh, that's very interesting. Yeah, let's push the pawn. I want to take that c7 bishop and then put my bishop on d6. Why would you do that? You know I'm not going to fall for it. Uh. Things are getting tricky. I think I'm just going to try and trade off everything. You're very persistent, aren't you? I'm losing on time, though. I see, I keep. For Lack of focusing on it. Do I even have a mate? 
Yeah, see, I lost some time. Ah. But yeah, I think I'm going to record all my games. And, and my first step is I'm just going to come back to 2100. And then I'm going to start really go forward towards a goal. And I think goals are, are really important because it gives you something measurable that you can achieve. So once I hit back to 2100, I'll then go for 22. And then my main number one goal is to go 23 because I've never hit 2300 ever. And oh, see, I just, I'm looking at this pawn. Like I'm literally staring at it right now as I'm talking and I just don't do anything. And you know, that, that's a bit, that's kind of like me a bit on tilt, but also, yeah, see, I noticed that too. And I didn't do anything about it, but it's also kind of like your brain just doesn't process it. It's like trying to drive and you're just going really slow for no reason whatsoever. And you think you're doing fun, but you're not. Do I care about that? No, I'm gonna, oh, I left that open, but let's play that. Yeah, we have to play that one. Hmm. Actually, that wasn't a good move. Yeah, that's what I thought. The problem is, is that I have all these potential threats, but I need to get rid of this queen. I think the queen's causing me way too much problems. Yeah, I can do that. See, I had to do that because I have to protect the rook from going over there. Oh, I just lost some pieces for no reason. And I somehow won on time. Not the way you want to win. <laughs> Believe me. I think my last tip for just today on, on, on not tilting is it's okay to not just keep playing the same speed all the time. Uh, one thing I've done is that sometimes I'll switch from 1 minute to 3 minute. And especially when I go from 1 to 3 because I feel like that's the pace where I, oh, why did I do that? Okay, so you didn't fall through. That's fine. Trade queens. That's okay. Play that. Definitely want to knock that knight away first. Uh... My position is very ugly, but I got some activity. And what I mean by ugly is that I knew that was going to happen. Um, I could push my pawn though, that's really nice. If he takes it, then I like it. And if he doesn't take it, then I still like it. Because now I get all these pawns. Every single one. Except that one. I got to figure out a way there's a way to dislodge that knight. Uh, so that's a nice move for activity. Let's start pushing. Let's work on this A pawn. Can I take it? Yeah, I can actually. Ooh, that's very ugly. Very, very ugly. <laughs> All right, let's get a rematch. So yeah, sometimes just changing the pace and staying to your game really does work. Well, we're going to do that thing. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's get rid of it. Really? Okay. Person really doesn't want to lose that dark bishop. 
Interesting. Arch. That's a, I guess it's okay to strengthen that spot. Uh, I don't want to trade yet. Even though I know his knight's going to move him. But I can push this pawn if that knight moves. Okay, well, see, that's why I didn't want to trade. Now I get rid of that dark bishop. Very nice. And if somehow he doesn't take this pawn, I can push this pawn up here further and just start smacking the king side. Uh, king side attacks are one of my favorite things to do in Blitz. It's just so fun. Okay, well, we're going to pin that. Uh, this pawn is weakened, but I don't really have to worry about that right now because of the pin. Oh, yes. We want to do that. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Okay, now we can put the bishop here. And now we're just going to slowly stack up on this pawn. Which I uh, obviously doesn't care about. I have no problem trading. Oh, I forgot to put my pawn there. That was really bad. Okay. I think I'm going to lose on time. Oh. See? I lost on time. I think this will be my last game. I'm already getting like blurry vision, which is a good indication that you're gonna. Oh, why did I do that? Some of you're probably wondering how the heck did I get to 2100. That's okay. I play a lot better than I than I show. So what's the plan? How do I get out of this? I think we need to get rid of that knight. I think he's going to put bishop there. Oh, yes. That's what I like. I like pins. I like free knights. Oh, that was so dirty. Uh, I think we're going to retreat the bishop and protect that spot. And I'm going to push this pawn and put my bishop there. And this is going to be some really disgusting looking battery. Oh, yes. Get rid of that rook. Or not. Uh, we'll do that. Oh, you want to trade? Okay. I can do that. Wait, why did I just mate? Oh, that's okay. Okay, we can do it now. All right, uh, we'll give him a rematch if he does one. No, he just left. So, okay, that's it for this game or this little fun little series. I think tilting is is really important, and psychological pressure is really important in in this game too. Um, take it for instance, Magnus Carlsen. He is not known just for his really precise and accurate moves that he he makes. He is known for that pressure where he'll keep pushing his opponent to the point where he'll try and force a mistake. And it's kind of the same trait like Gary Kasparov. When I when I I was a really big fan of Gary. I, I observed like all his games, I watched everything, especially at my even when I had a very limited understanding of chess. But I could just feel the energy and aurora of his intensity. And that is something that at the best, even the best players in the world, they can still sometimes be affected by who is sitting across from them. And that's the only thing when it comes to speed games that it doesn't really prepare you as well. It doesn't, at least when it comes to online, it doesn't prepare that that psychological mindset of of con being able to control yourself and feeling the pressure of your opponent like just pushing you to the max. Anyways, I hope uh, everyone enjoyed this, 
and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to finish the 1500-1800 ELO game. Well, later on today. I just got to find the right game to analyze. I'm going through some games right now, and I might just go on lead chess and look around. And if I see a game I particularly like that showcases the difference between 15 and 18, then I'll talk about that. All right, take care, everyone.